Hey everyone, I'm here at the USDA Forest Service Institute of Pacific Islands Forestry uh, with Kyrie Santos. And today we're gonna show you a little bit about propagation for your ohia kits. But first, I think it's important for us to learn a little bit more about Kyrie. Hey Kyrie, so who and where are you from? Aloha mai kako. Um, as Zach said, my name is Kyrie. I was born and raised here on Hawaii Island and I grew up in Puna. So is there any place on the island that you feel a special connection to? Um, I think since I have family on both sides of the island, um, I just feel connected to the, this island as a whole. Um, but specifically, I think I feel mostly grounded in Puna since I was raised there and I grew up there. What inspired you to get involved with conservation? Um, I think just growing up, always being outdoors. Um, as a kid, I grew up near the ocean, so I spent a lot of time makai, um, paddling, stuff like that with my dad. Um, so it wasn't until I was an adult that I spent time up moka in the forest. And I think that inspired me to want to learn more about moka ecosystems and the plants that grow there. What exactly do you do here at the U.S. Forest Service, and how are you connected with Ohia? So my main kuleana is to um, grow out these Ohia that we collect from highly impacted forests. So our project is um, basically researching rod resistance trees. So we'll go out into um, highly impacted forests that is basically degraded from rapid ohia death and we'll find survivor trees and what we'll do is we'll either take cuttings or seeds from those trees so we can bring them back here and create clones of them so we'll study those clones and then we'll be able to see what genotypes are resistant to rad and basically how they react to the fungus once they're inoculated and why some trees are um, still surviving, basically why these trees are still surviving in these highly impacted forests. I think how I'm connected to Ohia, um, not just by physically the work that I do, but since I grew up in Puna and I'm very connected to that place and the project that we do and the connections that we make is in forest in Puna. So being able to um, take collections from these survivor trees in Puna, um, I think it makes me feel like connected to Puna on a different level than just having been raised there. It's like the place that raised me is now being turned into like, I'm kind of giving to that place. So how did you get to the U.S. Forest Service doing what you do? Um, I just started off doing a lot of internships, so I started off with Kupu, which is the program that I'm doing now, and I was working with the Alala project, which is which was um, a reintroduction project to get the Alala back into the forest, um, since they are critically endangered now, extinct in the wild. Um, but I started off with that project, and then from there, that just inspired me to want to learn more and want to immerse myself in more um, fields of conservation. And after that internship, um, I did another one with NPBG, which is the National Tropical Botanical Gardens um, up in Kauai. And that was a three month program. And basically it was horticulture based. So um, I learned a lot of methodologies for growing native species. I learned about different types of environments that these species thrive in and basically how to better manage a forest ecosystem, how to grow these species that will help these forests thrive. Um, so that was very inspiring for me because it led me to where I am now. Because um, once I did that internship, I basically, like I solidified, okay, this is what I want to do in conservation. Like this is definitely the field I want to go in. I want to go into plant restoration. So when this opportunity came along with Ululehulehu and um, Great Ohia for our rod resistance work, I decided to take it because it was right in my zone 
and I will be growing um, one of the most significant species that we have here in Hawaii. So propagation basically means um, the method that you use to grow a plant. Um, so we use two different methods. We grow it with the, uh, by cuttings and also by seeds. Um, these are our cutting cuttings. Um, and what we do is just take branches of ohia, cut them into smaller sections, um, clip the top portion of the leaves, um, dip the cutting into rooting hormone so it can grow roots. And from there, we transplant the rooted cuttings into soil. When we propagate from seeds, which is what you folks will, will be doing, um, we just take our growing media, we put it in a tray and we sprinkle our seeds on top we make sure the the soil is moist and these are what they look like when they start to sprout up and from here once they get a little bigger we take the seedlings and we transplant them into soil and i'll grow them in pots so in your grow kit you'll have growing media which is soil and perlite mix and we also added nutricoat which is a slow release fertilizer and this will just add nutrients to the growing media and help your ohia to grow um, and the perlite in this mix just aerates the soil which helps with drainage and what you're going to do is just dump it in your pot you'll get two of these in your kits and you'll also get two ziploc bags to put your pots in after so we'll just put it to the top. And in order to sow the seeds, you want to make sure that the soil is moist. Um, so you're going to get a spray bottle with just water in it. Or you can put your own water in it. And then once your soil looks like it's wet, you're going to take your ohia seeds which look like this. So the seeds are these tiny little gold specks. These are the seed capsules that the seeds are in. You don't need to use the seed capsules. You're just going to take your seeds and sprinkle it evenly over the top. And then once you sow your seeds, you want to make sure that the soil is very saturated because they need a lot of water to be able to sprout. You want to make sure that you give good energy to the ohia so that it grows and it thrives. Um, so what we like to say is yola oi yola makone, which means um, when you thrive, we thrive. So we're thinking about reciprocal relationships with our surroundings and especially our native plants. Um, we want to make sure that we're putting good energy into it because they give us a lot of energy and a lot of resources that we need to survive. So Ohia, for example, um, she makes sure that we have water right in our watersheds. So we just want to make sure we give good energy to these seeds and in hopes that they will grow and it will be able to grow our communities. So another important step um, in this process is making sure that you care for your Ohia um, during the growing duration. So you want to make sure that the soil is constantly moist. 
Um, they will be in these bags, so it'll help to keep the moisture in. But if your soil starts looking dry, you want to make sure that you take your spray bottle and saturate your soil. And once you're done with that, you can just put your pot in your Ziploc. And what this will do is retain the moisture within the bag so your media doesn't dry out. And that's it. So when we're caring for our ohia, where should we put the pots with the freshly planted seeds? Um, you want to make sure that they have some shade until they sprout. So once you start seeing sprouts um, and those sprouts start into seedlings, you want to make sure they get a little bit of sunlight. So maybe by an open window or somewhere with partial sunlight. Other resources you can use for growing ohia at home on your own time um, is different types of growing media. So you can use sphagnum moss or peat moss, which you can find at your local nursery. Um, or you can just find moss in your backyard right under a tree. You can also recycle the items that we provided you with. So you can recycle a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag. Um, you can recycle pots or containers. You can also use like a Tupperware. Just make sure you drill holes at the bottom so it allows the water to go through and um, provide good drainage for your opiate to grow.